talk a little bit about spending sukkahs in the Rebbe's Daladamas. One of the inyanim that used to happen before Yantif that the Rebbe used to give a set of Dalad Minim, um, his own set, and also for the Rebbetson, to Reb David Raskin to bind. Reb David used to go to the big sukkah, and he would do it over there. And I don't know if it was because people were busy or people didn't know about it, but there wasn't usually a big crowd of uh, Bachram standing around watching him do it. There was always a handful, three, four guys. Um, so I, I, how did I find out about this? So my Yedid, Rebbe Yezza Zaklikovsky, in New Jersey, told me about it. He told me, come to the sukkah. You'll see Rebbe David buying the lulav. So I went along, take it. And as is uh, common when you bind the lulav, so usually some leaves fall off. So I got away with three uh, arove leaves from, from the Rebbe's Dalad Minim, which the Rebbe handed to Rebbe David. I actually still have those um, Arovis uh, leaves. Uh, I dry pressed them at the time and they're still uh, intact. Sukkis was an extremely busy tkufa. It's like Hazal say that Leitamu Tam Sheina, by Simchas Beis Hasheva in Beis Hamigdash, Al Derech by the Rebbe, it was so busy. So I'm going to try to give you a little bit of that um, the whole Yelech Visigigang the night of Sukkis I'm talking now about the later years and the Mems from Tavshin Mem Malav the Rebbe started saying Sikhis every night of, of Sukkis um, that's the years that I was by the Rebbe in the, in the last years so the Rebbe came into the shul for Mairev, Leil, his Kaddish Achag, first night of Sukkis. The Rebbe used to say the Sikhis in the front by Adeshtender on, on his Bime where the Rebbe used to daven. And because it was Yontif and there was no mic, it was very hard to hear, especially considering that the entire shul was packed and just from the amount of people being present, that, that, that makes a, a noise. And when the Rebbe sat by Fabreng, and also not everywhere in the shul were people able to hear in the later years, but still being more centrally located in the shul and everyone around, it was a bit uh, easier. But here the Rebbe was in one corner of the shul and everyone in front, so it, it was difficult to hear. So anyone who wanted to hear the sikhs had to really get a good spot in the front of the shul, in front of the Rebbe's bime, and there was a lot of pushing going on over there. But Bach Hashem, that, yeah, the Bachram obviously uh, uh, had a bit more kayach, and, and those that uh, worked hard uh, to get a spot, they got a spot. So. Baruch Hashem, I was able to get a spot and hear the Sikhs every night of Yontif, also when it was Shabbos and Yontif, not just Chalam Um But after the Sikha, the first night of Sukkis, the Rebbe used to go up and go out of 770 and go into the big shul in the Chatzar to greet the Orchim. And that was in the form of another Sikha, that the Rabbi used to say to the Archim. Now, but even clearly, the people who were in the shul downstairs were not able to be also by the Sikh and the Sukkah afterwards. But a few Bachrim who uh, tried hard, they ran right after the Rabbi went out of the shul. They had to run out of the shul too and get somehow into the sukkah, which was packed with archim. Who stood there. They said, look, we're the archim. The rabbi is coming to give us a sikha uh, to greet us. So we're not going to be able to hear the sikha in shul. 
they'll hear Chazorah from others afterwards, and they'll hear the Sikha in the Sukkah. That was like the given, the understanding was for most people that if you're in the shul, you're not going to hear the sicha in the sukkah. If you're in the sukkah, you're not going to hear the sicha in, in shul. It was either or. Um, but I tried to get to hear uh, also the sicha in the sukkah. So I, it was also hard to get out of the shul because the shul was packed with people for the Rebbe. They made a open up a big shvil and the Rebbe was able to uh, walk out of the, of the shul. But uh, from the, for the Elam to get out, from, if you're in the front of 770, to get to the back and out and to the sukkah, it was packed with people. But I made my way over the benches behind the Rebbe's uh, davening bimer, onto the fabrengen bimer, out of the steps going in the corner in the back out of 770 where you come out to the tashlich and i entered the sukkah from the back over there now i didn't know exactly where the rebbe is standing in the sukkah i'm describing you that that would happen in tafshin nun and they actually had set up a bima for the rebbe at that end of the sukkah. In other words, the Rebbe came out of 770 and went to the front of the sukkah. The Rebbe had to walk through the entire sukkah all the way to the back of the sukkah. And that's where the Rebbe got onto the platform where there was a shtender and the Rebbe said the sikh over there. So when I came from the back over there, it was actually blocked off with tables and I didn't know exactly what's inside the sukkah, so I climbed under the table and I got up uh, on the other side of the table and uh, I lifted up my head and I saw Rav Chodakov is standing there and then I looked to the left and I saw that the Rebbe is already standing on the, uh, on the tables over there, on the platform that they built. So I just ducked back under the table but I was able to hear every word of that sikhe. I remember the Rebbe said then, Avot, that uh, we say, Sukkas Eirisha Levyosen, and Lechaira, how is Sukkas Eirisha Levyosen a kosher sukhe bichlau? Vishtach Agav, there's a Rishime from the Rebbe explaining the Sheirish of Mitzvah Sukhe is Avram Avinu saying, Ishanu Tachas O'Eit, and then later, uh, we have the mitzvah of sukkah, and then from that will be zeichet to the schatus of kaser shalav yosin. So the Rebbe gives a, a, a beer over there, but th that's a different uh, beer. In that sikhe, the Rebbe uh, said uh, that there's going to be two sukkahs. It's not a shalav yosin, is not a kosher sukkah, but it's not going to be a sukkah for being mekai mitzvah sukkah. For mitzvah sukkah, there'll be regular sukkahs. But then, to go dance, for Simchas Beis HaShaiva, for Simchas Yontif, for that is going to be special tents, which uh, in this year, when we have uh, a lot of shulm, have outdoor minyam, and all kinds of tents may, uh, put up. So that reminds me of that uh, vote of the Rebbe, that is Sukkas Eir Shalav Yasna, going to be special tents. Um, that's not the Rebbe's Lashen, but uh, the word that is going to be Sukkas Eir Shalav Yos, not for Mitzvah Sukkah, but for uh, other uh, Yomtev, Simchas Yomtev activities, Rikudim, Kayetze, Boze. That was the word that the Rebbe said then. Um, Baruch Hashem, that uh, I, I had uh, the ability to hear Fabrengens and Sichis. I always uh, made sure to get a good spot where I was able to hear the Rebbe's Fabrengens and Sichis. And um, I was able to, to give over Chazor a little bit. In, in those years, I was a Bacher, I, I learned in Alotera. So many, many, many Sudis, Shabbos, and Yontiv I ate by Rabbi Moshe Kotlarski. It's all gesund sein. So I usually used to make Chazor over there, uh, of the Fabringen, of the Sichis. I remember that night also, I, I, I went there for Sudas Yontiv. And uh, 
I had it over from the Sikha in the Shul and from the Sikha in the Sukkah. It was like, people were like surprised. How were you able to do that, Bechlam? Baruch Hashem, it was, uh, some, it was Matzliach to do it. Um, but not always was I Matzliach to do that. In, in Tavshin and Beis, actually, they tried to make it uh, that more people should be able to hear the Rebbe Sikhis on Shabbos and Yom Tiv. So the first night of Sukkot, they put up uh, plywoods across all the benches behind the Rebbe's Tfilo Bima until the Fabrengen Bima. And um, they wanted that the Rebbe should sit. Was in Tavshin and Beis and Tisha, the Rebbe uh, suffered on his foot and I uh, don't want to get into that, but um, uh, for the Rebbe to stand for the entire Sikha, was a, they tried to avoid that. So they set up the Fabrengen place with the Rebbe's chair and the table. They wanted the Rebbe should walk across those pieces of plywood to the Fabrengen Bima. And, and then the Rebbe is going to say the Sikha while sitting in his chair. So after the evening, uh, Rebbe Label Groner told the Rebbe that... Uh, the Rebbe can walk across and the Sikha will be over there. So the Rebbe did take a Siddur and the Rebbe walked across. But when the Rebbe came to the Fabrengen place, the Rebbe did not sit down. The Rebbe stood the entire Sikha and held his uh, holy hands leaning on the table, which actually probably was more difficult. For the second night, they brought the Stender there, so that the Rebbe could stand there, um, which enabled more people to hear the Sikha, uh, because the Rebbe was more centrally in the shul, and people were all around. Um, so that was a, a special machze, but that was uh, unique for that year, Tavshin and Beis, only the first night. Chalamayit uh, was again in the front when there was a microphone. <clears throat> So Sukkis morning. So after the the Rebbe, sorry, the, the night after the Sikhe, uh, after the Sikhes and uh, Sudas Yontiv, so everybody would go dance because the Rebbe made the Sturm of dancing in the streets, Simchas Beis Hashayva, and even though in Beis Hamikdash the first night of Sukkis there wasn't, but the Rebbe always spoke about. And now that we can start already the first night. So already the first night there was dancing. Um, in the morning, first day of Yontif, and all days of Yontif, the Rebbe would come uh, into the suk- his own sukkah to shake Lulav. It was usually around 8 o'clock or something like that. It was early. The davening started at 10. Um, the Rebbe used to shake Lulav inside the sukkah. And then the Rebbe used to give out his uh, Dalad Minim to the Mayor Harlik to take it to the big sukkah to enable everyone to shake on the Rebbe's Dalad Minim. And, and that would go on for a few hours. The Rebbe would come into Shul at 10 o'clock for Shachras without his Dalad Minim. Before Halal, the Mayor would bring the Rebbe's Dalad Minim down to the Shul for the Rebbe to use, for Halal and shyness, And then later, after the evening, he would get it again to enable more people to shake on the, on the Rebbe's Dalad Minim. But people were able to shake uh, on the Rebbe's Dalad Minim to make the broche. I should say that uh, nobody made on the Rebbe's Dalad Minim. People came over, they made just a broche, gave a little... Uh, Shokel, that was the mitzvah of Natilas Lulav, and then they would go into the big shu- uh, uh, further into the big sukkah, and over there take someone else's dalad minim to to do the nanuim on, but uh, on the Rebbe's dalad minim was only the bracha, and the first day of sukkahs in Tavshin and Beis, everybody had heard about that. The Rebbe stood. We'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, Bichlal, 
anybody who wanted to make sure that he gets to shake the, the Rebbe's Dalad Minim between the time that the Rebbe gives it out in the morning around 8 o'clock or 8.15 and 10 o'clock so that you can join davening Shachris with the Rebbe too. So you had to be there early and the line would form earlier. They actually had a system of uh, tickets. People took tickets uh, early in the morning. I don't remember exactly when it was. Uh, like after Simchus Hasheva, in, in the wee hours of the night, I don't know, it's four o'clock or five o'clock, they started giving out tickets. So you got a ticket, let's say number 56. So you were able to go to sleep a, a little bit and go to mikveh and then come at eight o'clock and get into the line because you had a ticket for a lower number. And there was a whole system like that. And then at davening by the Rebbe Dalad on Sukkis, it took a long time because, uh, first of all, it's Yontif davening and Halil and singing and Anuim. But by his shyness, the Seder was that first, the Rebbe would do the Hishainis. I'm talking regular day of Sukkis. Hishan Rabbi took even longer, but a regular day. It was just one hakafe, but the Rebbe made the first hakafe. The chazan would walk ahead in front of the Rebbe, and then the Rebbe, and then Rav Chadakov, and uh, Maskirim, and, and other Shuve uh, Anash would walk on the first round of hakafes. Then the Rebbe would go back to his shtender, that I would turn around and watch the Oilom do her shyness. And that would take, it would take 20 minutes or so, or so or even more maybe, till everybody in the show made their hakafas. And throughout that entire time, the Rebbe stood holding his Dalad Minim, facing the Oilom, and that was a machze nedar pushed to, to, to stand and, and look at the Rebbe. Most Bachrim didn't have their own set of Dalad Minim. They took uh, for Nanuim, this and that, but uh, if they made uh, his shyness or not, they just stood in the place where you were able to watch the Rebbe looking at the Oilam. And there was Pashit, Melech uh, Tachzen, and, and, and you were able, you can see it today, there's so many beautiful pictures of that Machze, how the Rebbe is just standing there with the Dalad Minim watching the Oilam. <coughs> So I don't remember exactly what time davening ended with Musaf and Tilim, but it was probably 12.30 or something like that, maybe yeah, something like that, I would say. And so the night, there were the sikhs, there was the dancing. They were standing in line for the Dalad Minim, Dalad Minim, davening. Then there was Mifzah Lulav. People went to do Mifzahim. And then Chayza Chalila. So there was no time to sleep. So of course we slept. Uh, we weren't Malachim. So you hopped at uh, two, three hours uh, in the wee hours of the morning, uh, plus an hour uh, before Mincha or something like that in the afternoon. But it was very, it was a very intense yontiv spending by the Rebbe. I never was Pesach by the Rebbe. But from what I understood, the uh, descriptions of I, Pesach, in contrast, was a very calm yomtiv. There was not much going on. There's no mifzoim that you can do. You can, there's no mifzah lulav. There's no mifzah tefillin. So it's, it's a much quieter yomtiv. And, and usually there also weren't sikhs every night. Uh, there was Tashmem Ches, well, but Bechlal is uh, Pesach. There were, there were Achrach of Pesach, of course, as soon as Mashiach, and there was uh, yeah, occasionally the sikh, there was a sikh and Chalamayit for children's rally, and occasionally there was a sikh. It wasn't that intensity like Sukkis. Sukkis, Pashid, Leito Amnu Tam Sheino, and there was dancing, and there were Fabringans also. The Rebbe actually spoke about this one of the years, I think it was Tashin Dalud Mem, that, uh, that the whole shturim of uh, dancing uh, in the streets, but we have to remember also that Mina uh, Globavich is to Fabreng Simchas Beis HaSheva. And Yavshalakayim Shneim, there's also the dancing in all Fabrengs. And that's actually 
what happened then, it still happens to these days, that, you know, there's dancing, but there are also Fabrengens, and there were a lot of Sturmdige Fabrengens and a lot of Sukkis, private Sukkis, Klolistige Sukkis in 770. Um, so it was a very packed Gehoiben Yontif, just being in the Dalit Amis, the Arum, the, the whole Avir from Arum was very, very intense in Gehoiben. And the Rebbe's Giluim, that was, the, these were the highlights, the Sichas, the davening with the Rebbe, every night after davening, the Sichas, a lot of times when there were Nigunim, the Rebbe said, good Yontif, and good Meyed, with Ashturim. Uh, you can see on the videos, but you, uh, when, when it was live and you experience it, no video can do justice and truly give over the avira that um, was in 770 at, in the Shnei Soir. Um, talking about Tavshanun Beis Take, the first day of Sukkis, the Rebbe, as everyone uh, knows, walked out after he gave the Dalminim to the Mayor Harlik. The Rebbe followed him to the place where he gave everyone to Sheikh Lulav. And I remember standing in line. I was, I don't remember what my ticket number was, but I was standing uh, in, already between the buildings of the Kailam and Rav Khadakov's house. Uh, close to the Tashlech place, in line, waiting to start the, when, when the, the Rebbe Stahl Minim would come out. And I remember while standing there, the, the, the Shmuel got down the line, the Rebbe is standing there, the Rebbe is standing there, nobody knew what that meant, mean, the Rebbe is standing there. Until we actually made that turn of the corner and saw the mayor standing there with the Dal Minim giving it, and the Rebbe standing in the corner behind him and watching everyone. You only saw that once there were like three, four people ahead of you, because there was like that little corner they built in the Tashin base, a little extra sukkah for the Dalad Minim shaking, for, 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 for uh, Natilas Lula from the Rebbe's Dalad Minim. And that you're going to do something in front of the Rebbe was a, a very um, it's hard to describe that. You know, usually you walk by by the Rebbe, the Rebbe gave you a dollar, the Rebbe gave you a kuntres, the Rebbe gave you lekach, panim, you gave the Rebbe a pan, but here you had to say uh, not just one bracha, two brachas, so that was a very, uh, the Rebbe said Amen after each person's bracha. Um, I don't remember hearing the Rebbe's Amen to my brachas. I was so uh, uh, you know, shooken up to do it. I did it and I heard later on how the Rebbe corrected people, people who got flustered and didn't say the bracha correctly. Some people forgot Shechionu, the Rebbe said Shechionu. Um, but I do remember the Machze, how the Rebbe stood there and watched everyone, because for those few moments, until it was my turn, I was actually looking at the Rebbe. And in, in, I'll say something general now. In Bechlal, in, in, the, in the later years, I don't know how, how it was in the earlier years, but in the later years, in the, in the Nuns, the Rebbe, the Rebbe's uh, pon of Hakdashim were usually very serious, very streng. When the Rebbe would come to Daven, the Rebbe used to turn around after Davening and look at Elam. It was always very, very serious. On occasion, we saw the Rebbe smile, but it wasn't a common thing to see the Rebbe smile. When we watch videos today, you see a lot of times the Rebbe smiling, but it wasn't a common thing that was seen in public. By dollars it happened, it happened by Yechidus Legvirim, and, but in the shul, so the average bachel, we didn't often see the Rebbe smile. So whenever the Rebbe smiled in shul, it was a, 
Nismala kol habay is kula oira. Pashat the Rebbe smile lit up the entire 770. So, and, and I saw that a few times to different individuals that the Rebbe gave a broad smile. But that was a chidosh dover. Here, when the Rebbe stood in the sukkah watching everyone, the Rebbe wasn't smiling, but the Rebbe also wasn't with that serious demeanor. The Rebbe stood leaning against the back wall of the sukkah and a little bit in the corner, and the Rebbe looked sideways a little bit at the person, Sheikh Nalulav. But the Rebbe's facial expression was a very calm, just, Melech um, Beyofi Tachzene in Echa. In the Kutatera, there's this matter upon him, Seicha case, and there's the matter of the Mekabu Kunum, the Seva upon him, Yofi. So here it wasn't matter upon him, Seicha case, there was no smile, but it was Seva upon him, Yofi, very relaxed look, which I don't recall seeing on the Rebbe's face at, at any other time. I, I've never seen the Rebbe with that type of relaxed look, the Rebbe looking at every chassid like that. I have never, the Rebbe, never seen the Rebbe before or after with that, that them cook and that facial expression, which was, um, I remember walking out afterwards and cherishing that, that machza, I will never forget that. that this is, eingekarpt in meyach hazikaron le'ilom void. Um, what else can I share about Sukkis Bamrebim? The Nanuim were uh, a Mahzah to watch the Rebbe do the Nanuim. You can see that on the videos. Um, very meticulous, very oizgerechend. We're able to see that. There's a famous picture, and it's now on the Sharblat of the Kfar Chabad uh, this year for Sukkis, the Rebbe wearing glasses, which was, uh, that was the first time that I saw the Rebbe in glasses, was that Sukkis. Um, and the Rebbe put on the glasses, was a Shan Rebbe, and the Rebbe wore them also while walking around for his shyness. Um, there was another time when I saw the Rebbe wear glasses. That was Tavshin on Aleph, Shabbos Bereshis. Tavshin on Aleph, the Kvies was Thursday, Friday, and then was Shabbos. So by the Shabbos, the Gefabringen, the Rebbe pulled out the glasses and opened up the Siddur. And even before the Rebbe started, I, I saw already what is happening. And the Rebbe opened up the Siddur to Bnei Echolah. Uh, so, but then also the Rebbe wore the glasses. But it wasn't a common uh, thing to see the Rebbe in glasses. But uh, that year, Sukkis, we saw the Rebbe, I think that that was Tavshin Nun, when the Rebbe wore the glasses. Either Tavshin Mem Tess or Tavshin Nun, I think it was Tavshin Nun. <coughs> for the, for, I, mean, I meant for that coffers. The, that that Fabring in the Shavs Breshis was Nun Aleph. <coughs> Chalamei Tzukis, the dancing intensified just due to the fact that there was uh, music. Um, so there was dancing the whole night and also Chalamei Tzukis, Miftsoim intensified more because there was uh, Sukkah mobiles, able, able to travel, go on Miftsoim route to people. And also, Simchat Pesach Sheva, Tzach would send out uh, people to go to different uh, places to do Fabringens and Simchat Pesach Sheva in the beginning of the night. So, Sukkot was very, very busy. Um, one more Nekud I remember about that first day of Sukkot in Tavshin on Beis. By the time everybody shook Lulav, the Rebbe came into Shul for Tudavan. It was already after three o'clock. 3, 3.15 or something like that. It was very late in the day. So the Rebbe Daven Shachris, and then there was Halal and Hoshainis, and there was Musif. And after Musif, the Rebbe already stayed in Shul to Daven Mincha as well. 
which is a, was a very big, big chiddush, because uh, while in many places people actually do that, chapa minche noch musif sometimes, but really he's supposed to make kiddush first. So this was a chiddush that the Rebbe did not make a half sick, and after min musif went straight on to minche. But there was another chiddush. The label Groner, Zechrein Levach, approached the Rebbe at the end of Musaf, I don't remember, it was uh, uh, right after Chazor Sashatz, or if it was during Tehillim, he walked over to the Rebbe, and he asked the Rebbe, uh, like, what the Rebbe wants to do, if the Rebbe wants to daven Minche, um, and he asked the Rebbe if he should bring the Rebbe's hat. The Rebbe's hat was in the Rebbe's room. Should he bring the Rebbe's hat down for Minche? And the Rebbe told him, no, he should, He'll just daven like that. And the Rebbe daven with the talus on his head, Mincha too, which is also a very big Chiddush. If you're familiar, there's also some uh, letters from the Rebbe about the Mincha, Mairi, with the talus. Uh, in some shulen, uh, they do that. Um, uh, the Chazan wears a talus for Mincha, for Mairi, and uh, we don't do that. Um, it was just, it was a very unusual, the whole first day of Sukkot that year, Tav Shunon Beis, was very unusual. First of all, that Rebbe stood watching everybody do Natilas Lulav, and then the Rebbe not being mafsik and just standing there for hours and hours and hours till everybody was done, and then the Ersh coming to Davin Shachlis, and Minche, and uh, with a Talis. So it was very, very unique. I don't remember what time it was when we finished, but I remember we had to run to do Kiddush and to Das Yontif, and soon there was already time to go back to Sam Semini for Mairiv and second night of Sukkis and the Sikh and so on and so forth. So that was a, a real Simchas Yontif. It's hard to describe uh, the feeling and, and, and the Avir, but it was uh, and this was known not only by Anash, also other Kreisen. So Yantiv was uh, more the locals. Comes Chalamid, and some 70 every night became packed with Streimlach from other neighborhoods, Williamsburg, Bora Park, and other Yidden from Flatbush, uh, Yidden without beards, and I mean, it, it, Everybody knew this. Sukkis in Lubavitch, that's the place to be. Not just later on, a lot of people came for later, for Simchus Beis Hashreva, the dancing on the street. But that only started uh, an hour, two, three later. That wasn't, uh, people came to be by the Rebbe and get a dollar from the Rebbe and, and to experience that Simcha Peretz is gather, push it in the shul, being in the Rebbe's Dalit Amis, the, the Sing Vesamachta, as the Rebbe walked out the shul, it was such an intense, electrifying simcha that is very hard to describe. But everybody felt it, everybody knew it. So the Ebesha should help, that we should be Zeche, the Kar of Mamish, to the Chadish Amenu Kekedem, and even greater, Simchas Eilam, Al Reisham, this Chagasukis, Vias Mishiach Tzitkenu, take it from Yad Mamish.